I'm Rob Lucuria, Senior Editor at Gold Derby, here with Levin Atkin, who directed episodes five and six of the critically acclaimed Interview with a Vampire on AMC+. Levin, you're one of a number of directors collectively bringing the show to life, and you took on episodes five and six. Talk us through why you took on those particular two episodes. Um, yeah, so I, to, I, I mean, I, I'm a big Anne Rice fan, so I... I um, grew up reading Anne Rice and I actually um, read about the show uh, on a forum and um, got very excited that it was actually being made and um, told my agents that I really wanted to be a part of, of the show. And then uh, I met with Roland Jones, who luckily decided to hire me <laughs> and yeah so that's sort of how it, so and and he having seen my film he thought that episodes five and six would fit my um temperament so to speak mm -hmm. so that's that's how it ended up being those episodes that's really interesting and i want to do a bit of a deep dive a little later into your particular aesthetic and temperament and how that fits in with five and six because i think that's actually a really good call on behalf of roland jones the showrunner but um, what is it actually like, though? I, I ask this with directors on series a lot because it's usually the case that you take on a couple of episodes and you're working collaboratively with the other directors, but you're still bringing your own voice to the, to the season. So when you're taking the baton from another director, you're still trying to expand upon the show's vision. And what's that like to work with other directors or do you just not work with them at all? No, no, uh, on the contrary. I mean, as a person who, you know, I I make my own films and they're usually very independent and hard hard to do. And, you know, to me, I, I feel like it's sort of a relief to have an auteur like Rollin who has the whole vision and I come in to sort of help him create his vision. Uh, and and when you're lucky enough that your tastes sort of align and, and you know, because when I read the pilot for Interview with the Vampire, I was so excited as a fan. And yeah. then I knew even more that I wanted to, you know, because I remember I met with Mark Johnson, the producer first, and he was kind enough to send me um, um, the pilot episode to read. This was before I'd met Roland. Um, and reading, uh, you know, because I was a little like, okay, I, you know, I, I'd seen things Roland had done and I knew that it was going to be, you know, have a high quality, but still as a fan, you, you, you're not, you know, you have your own ideas, you know, but he, I think, you know, he elevated, I think the material even. So, um, um, but yeah, so you really come in into a vision that's already there. That's, you know, with the production designer, with Mara's, um vision and you know the world was there it existed when i stepped in and and somebody told me um i took a course with the dj before because it was my first american series so they have like this course for foreign directors and one of the directors who was holding the course said a very smart thing she said that um she compares being an episodic director to borrowing somebody else's kitchen and you can only use the ingredients that they have in their fridge but you can use your own spices and try to create the best dish you can with what's available to you and that's i really think that was the perfect sort of analogy for or the perfect metaphor for yeah working. I, yeah right i love that because the show has a really consistent feel throughout the seven episodes but i Having seen your you know, your most famous film, um, I was uh, by the way at, that's and then we danced. Um, I, I I saw a little glimpses of your style in it, and I really enjoyed that, which we'll talk about in a sec. I was also thinking, you know, the, the series has changed a little bit from the original novel. You know, Louis is not a slave and a plantation owner; he's uh, he's a closeted Creole black brothel owner, and of course. This show wholeheartedly embraces the queer love story between Lestat and Louis, uh, which the film from 1994 didn't. So, you know, and Roland has said that he loves the gothic romance. He wants it to be an aggressive, toxic, beautiful love story. It was so smart for the show to do that. What are your thoughts on the, on the show pivoting towards 
and really embracing the queer love story between the two of them. Yeah, I think it was a very um, smart decision, of course, but also I think a decision that came from Rollins' heart. I don't think it wasn't, uh, you know, he's very passionate about these characters and about, I think, Anne Rice as a whole. He really understands her voice, I feel. Uh, and I think it, it, it is, it is what this show and this material should have always been. Uh, and um, yes, I, I, I think sort of what drew me to the books growing up was, you know, the queer or the queer elements. And, 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 and uh, I think you can sense it in the film, like it is there somewhere, but not ex obviously as explicitly as it is in the show. Um, but yeah, I love it. Yeah, and um, it, it kind of reminded me of back when your film came out a few years ago, you know, it was so well received. But then back back in Georgia, where, you know, that's your uh, ethnic background, your parents are from there, um, there was so much outrage from conservative circles about, you know, the fact that it's a, a gay love story. And we're now a few years later where we're living in a very perilous time in the United States where LGBTQ people are constantly under attack. And it's just so cool that a big budget series can come out like this and celebrate the love between two people, vampires, whatever you want to call them. And it's celebrated, but it's not necessarily something that we have to hide from or that we have to um, maybe not put in the um, ad advertising material. So I'm curious how you, how you feel about the evolution of gay love stories from your film a few years ago to now and and the fact that you still get to do it um that i i um i remember being on set in new orleans walking you know the back lot and thinking to myself wow you know this is a high budget a plus series that celebrate not just a queer you know romance but also like a problematic one that it's not, you know, it's not all about just, you know, oh, how can these two people become, you know, come together despite all the odds. It's about so much more at the same time, and it's and they're queer, uh, and I and I, I think to me it, it it's really I had to pinch myself. I mean, I had to pinch myself all the time just even being there in New Orleans filming Anne Rice because I'd actually been there like ten years before, and and I did like an Anne Rice tour. <laughs> Wow. So I was just like, I'm like, I can't believe I'm back filming this. But uh, yeah, so uh, I think everything to me is surreal. But but that aspect I think is fantastic, and and it's just I mean we we're living in really strange times uh, mm -hmm. in many ways. I think it's a weird timeline that we're on, um, but um, and it's it's so divided. You know, on one hand you have this show uh and on the other hand you know like the, like you said when my film came out there were thousands and thousands of people demonstrating against it so you know um, but, I, but i'm i'm cautiously optimistic that's good um i wanted to i think i think all seven episodes are amazing but i must say my sense is fans and critics really love the pilot the finale and episode six and episode six, like Angels Put in Hell by God, is a, a one that you directed. Uh, I thought it was probably the strongest of the season. I loved it. And I just wanted to talk a little bit about some of the choices that were made in it, if you don't mind. Um, so the episode tracks the ebb and flow between Louis and Lestat as we discover Lestat has the gift of flight. He's dropped Louis from the sky. And then he, but he, he eventually comes back to try to ingratiate himself back into Claudia and Louis's life. So what was your brief from Roland and the team about this is what we really want to achieve with episode six? Yeah, I mean, I think in many ways, episode six was a difficult episode. Roland often says that, that we manage doing something that you never should do, which is, you know, have a whole episode, get them back to point a like where they were before before episode five yeah um because usually you know the audience will just sit and wait and be like okay now they're gonna try to mend this and then you know we're back where we were uh 
but because of the writing, which is fantastic, uh, I, I remember reading five thinking like, okay, where do we go from here? Like, how do we get back from this? And then uh, reading six and I was like, oh, okay, this, this works, wow. But of course I was feeling a little like, oh my gosh, how am I gonna, you know, uh, I need to, you know, make this work. Uh, so I felt the pressure, but, 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 um, I think episode six is also just so fun. Like that scene when, um, Louis breaks in, uh, to Antoinette's house. <laughs> it's so good. It's so, it's so over the top, but it's done with such bravado. Uh, I think is the right word. It's done with such conviction and if you're there, you're with them and they're you know, their chemistry and their contact. And I think, you know, obviously more uh, Sam and Jacob in that scene, they're phenomenal. That was a tough night because there was a storm coming in. So we had to like pause the shoot and we were like waiting, like huddled in a little house there. Uh, and it was really cold and it was, you know, I don't know, 2 a.m. And we didn't even know if we were going to get to do that scene or not. And then... Um, finally, the first AD, Scott, came and he was like, okay, we can shoot, like, let's do it. And we were all, like, really pumped to do that scene. And, yeah, that, that was a very special night. I'm so glad you raised that because that was my next question was that scene because I think it's the scene of the episode. I love that shot. And I could be wrong. Maybe it was edited. Maybe this is all visual effects. But you're in there with Antoinette and Lestat but then the camera floats out onto outside onto the neon lit um, uh, fire escape well, where Louis and um, Claudia are eavesdropping. And I was just like, wow, talk me through that. Like what, why do you decide yeah, to that is those not, little chances? That's not, there isn't, there is no cut there. Like it yeah, actually it does go. Out. We're there. Like, it, like that's also one of the things we have an, um, um, like our SFX and the effects teams are fantastic. We have a VFX supervisor called Ted Ray. And he's like a legend. He uh, did, you know, he's done like everything from like Terminator to Game of Thrones and, yeah. and, 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 and like the team around this and my DP, David Tattersall, who is also phenomenal. He, um, I mean, he's shot like everything that we grew up watching Star Wars and Green Mile and, and he's a legend. Uh, and so, you know, I was surrounded by all of these people and I had these ideas where I was like, hmm, I wonder if it's possible to do this. And there was just this like excitement and energy around everything. Because again, when you come from filming with very low budgets and from an independent perspective, it's really hard to, to sort of visualize the ideas you have because you don't have enough you know, resources and expertise. Like you don't have the knowledge around you. But here on this show, you do. And so you're you're able to do these kinds of shots that are more intricate and, and and you know with the help of everybody we just sort of piece it together. But I love that shot too. I think both me and David were very you know film noir was yeah. obviously an inspiration to us. And there's also a shot that I love uh, that I actually it became like sort of a meme uh, and I and I liked one of those memes on Twitter because I thought it was so funny. But when Let's, in episode five, when Lestat lifts the needle from the record player and the camera goes, <laughs> it's so good. This so is like good. Norma Desmond the moment. Yes, um, I love that. Yeah. It's and it's so campy, and uh, yeah, and we so allow campy. that. You have to embrace that. You have, you have to, to embrace it. You must. Um, Sam Reed as Lestat, another Aussie, by the way, and he's an amazing yes. actor. I know because I've seen so much of his work. I didn't even realize it was him to begin with. But you know what I find fascinating? In your episode, there is a scene towards the beginning of the episode where Claudia and Louis are interrogating him. And you framed it so that they're like this and he's here. And mm -hmm. he seems so small to me, small and uh, accommodating and apologetic, which is so not what the start is supposed to be. I'm curious as to what was the intention behind the beginning parts of the episode where Lestat is apologetic and he's trying to ingratiate himself and he's not the bigger larger than life character yeah um that was actually very interesting because that scene when they when he's very small in the middle and they're like looming large around him 
Um, I'm glad you brought that up because to me, episode six was so much about how, how can we, you know, not forgive Lestat, or I mean, it's not it's because, it, but, but more just sort of make the audience come along on the ride of like Lestat, or sorry, Louis actually, you know, um, deciding to go back into this relationship again. And I think for me, the key was to see another side of Lestat. We, on purpose in those scenes, talked a lot about making him more grounded, um, making him less sort of, um, um, how would you say, not manipulative, but less, you know, trickster, that this is trickster yeah. energy that he always has, this yeah. sarcasm, you know, less, yeah. Less but venomous sincere. and more, it's just so sincere. More, it's a sincere, yes. And believable. And believable. And I think he is in that moment also. Yeah. I think he, he is in that moment. Um, I spoke with Sam about that the other day. You know, that's, that's not evil. He's just bad, as yes. a lot of these characters are. But he's, he, you know, and, and, mm -hmm. and I think that's and but but yeah I, sincerity was was something and and him being earnest in that moment and just yeah. being like listen i fucked up and but i'm still here yeah and um, earnestness yeah. is, is really difficult to portray authentically on screen sometimes it can go awry um before i let you go there's another couple of things i love the gags mm -hmm. with the lamb and the coffin going over the balcony and let's start with a decapitated head that was funny. Um, but the dream in San Francisco, it's a flashback really, where we realize Rashid is actually, well, you know, by the finale, we know who he really is. Uh, I was blown away by that. Was it was it nice to be able to do a bit of 70s? I think there's a 70s vibe going on in San Francisco. That you know? was a fresh of breath air because <laughs> you know, we we were filming only nights and we had, you know, this sort of uh I mean, it was the 20s and it's very velvety and very plush and there's, you know, it got quite dark. Yeah. So to be able to come into modern time and that was my favorite scene to film in my whole, from my, both my episodes because it's an iconic scene. Yeah. Uh, that's the first time they meet and I got to film that and I was very, very excited about it. And um, Luke who plays young Malloy, uh, he's fantastic and and uh yeah you'll see more of him in this season uh and uh yeah i thought that that was a very fun scene to do yeah and of course you've got the stuff in dubai as well which i really enjoy i can't wait to speak to the production designer because that stuff is incredible but my uh, my final question is you're currently shooting in prague which is standing in for paris i think uh for season yeah. two uh we know we're ben shooting in paris too actually we'll oh, be filming are? in paris also oh, yes Oh, that'd be yeah. great. So it's so a combination. It's yeah. a combination, yeah. Ben Daniels has joined the cast. Um, yes. What more can we I expect? Met him for the first time, um, yeah, uh, the, the day before yesterday, and I was, it was, fun. he's fantastic. I was very excited. I can't wait to see him as Santiago. And um, is there anything else that you can say with, obviously, without giving anything away? Do you think that we, has the show gone like 110% to what it was? Uh, what I mean, it's going to be a while since till it comes out. But what can you tell us? Tell us it. Uh, I can just say that I am extremely excited about this season, and I think it's even better than season one. And I, and it's so fun because the audience doesn't know what to expect. Like it's, it's. I mean, what I'm, you know, while I'm reading the episodes as they come in, I'm, I'm just like, oh my god. Oh. <laughs> yeah it's a very very uh good season and I, I i i don't understand how rollin and hannah and colin like all of the writers well, like it's just it's 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 magic to me i don't know how they do it well i can't wait for that in the meantime congrats on some beautiful work in the show thank and, you so um, much i'll thank catch you. up with you next time thank you bye